A warm welcome to all members and friends. Thank you for joining our English pre-recorded worship service. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are in whatever time zone. I bring you greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard all our hearts and minds, hearts and minds of our families as well, our loved ones and friends. May our hearts and minds be strengthened by this peace of God during this difficult season. Today is May the 24th. Methodists uh, commemorate this day as Aldersgate Sunday, the day in which John Wesley, the founder of Methodism, had his heartwarming experience. Let us join our voices in worship as we sing a Wesley hymn, Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing. Now let's join together in this call to worship and we will read it responsibly. We are called to bring a new understanding of God, that God so loves the world. We are the salt of the earth. We are called to bring a new hope in God, that God gives us new life. We are the light of the world. We are called to follow the commandments and the law. The law, the law of God is to love God and to love one another. Come, let us be the salt of the earth, the light of the world. Come, Come let, let us love one another with the love of God. Let, let us join together in our love of God to worship and follow Jesus. Amen. Blessed Lord, you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant us so to hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life, which you have given us in our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives 
and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The scripture reading is taken from Romans chapter 12, verses 1 to 2, and verses 9 to 21. I will read from the English Standard Version. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Verse 9. Let love be genuine. Abhor what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honour. Do not be slothful in zeal. Be fervent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints and seek to show hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Never be wise in your own sight. Repay no one evil for evil, but give thought to do what is honourable in the sight of all. If possible, as far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God. For it is written, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. To the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. For by doing so, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Peace be with you, brothers and sisters in Christ. The coronavirus outbreak has caused chaos all over the world. From the beginning of February till now, nearly all businesses have been affected. On the other hand, there are some good news. The world environment is doing better. The animals have found their long lost space. The rivers are cleaner and the sky is blue once again. From the start of the outbreak, due to stringent measures taken by each government to control the spread of the virus, our lifestyles have also changed drastically. Today, on the 8th of May, we are pre-recording the Order's Gate Thanksgiving service for online service. We have been organizing the Order's Gate conference for two decades already. And the Order's Gate combined service still a meaningful for us to continue organizing. Let us review John Wesley Order's Gate experience. In 2017, Reverend Dr. Wilfred Ho wrote a book on Wesleyan theology entitled, Behold, John Wesley, a Soterio Pastoral Theologian. This is a book that is worth reading. It was for our generations that he has done a full review of the research and given his views on John Wesley Osdersgate's experience. 
let me share something from it. Many considered that it was John Wesley Aldersgate's experience on 24th May 1738, where he felt his heart strangely warm that marked his spiritual breakthrough, his genuine conversion experience, his spiritual revival, where he received assurance of salvation and his baptism in the Holy Spirit. Like the experience of many Christians, before he had this Aldersgate experience, Wesley waited a constant struggle with sin and felt powerless against it. He also had nagging doubts about his own faith and if indeed he was safe. But on 24th May 1738, about 8.45 in the evening, while he was listening to someone read the preface to the epistle to the Romans, he had a profound experience. I felt I did trust in Christ alone for salvation, and an assurance was given me. This thought made his heart feel strangely warm. It was after the Aldersgate experience that Wesley realized that he had already broken free from the bondage of the law of sins and death. And now, being sure that only Jesus Christ can free him from this knot and to receive freedom and release, this is a place marker in his spiritual journey. There follows the eager anticipation of continuous growth in his spiritual life. And when he reaches the next place marker, he will be closer yet to a state of perfection. Today, from the spiritual experience of broad spectrums of Christians, we can understand John Wesley Aldersgate's experience as an instantaneous and decisive turn around in his spiritual life. It was one of many defining moments in his spiritual life journey. This contributes to what Wesley calls our gradual lifelong growth. This is a key point that was made about the author's experience by Reverend Richard Ho's book, that it is not in just one moment that we are changed, but our transformation is a continuous lifelong growth. The message of Romans chapter 12. Now let us return to today's scriptures from Romans chapter 12, verse 1 to 2, and verse 9 to 21. For our reflection at this year, Aldersgate Conference. I chose to use this passage because I feel that the epistles to the Romans is the most important book to help us understand John Wesley's commitment to faith and its practice, and like him, to have an Aldersgate life experience, to be part of the great lifelong growth in our pursuit of perfection. Like Paul's other letters, the first part of Romans discuss doctrines, and the second part is to encourage the readers, that is you and I, how to live out our beliefs. John Wesley took the holy love of God very seriously, as well as how one's faith is acted out. He urged Methodists to pursue holiness until we are perfect like God, our Heavenly Father. To Him, holiness means to love God with our whole heart and mind and to love others like ourselves, also with our whole heart and mind. If we say our heart is full of holy love for God and yet are unable to love others in the same way, 
then one does not qualify as loving God. Loving God with all your heart and strength. Now, in Romans chapter 12, verse 1, Paul appealed to the Christians of the Roman church with great urgency in his tone that they are to fear and serve God, to worship and honor him fully and absolutely. These words, to offer your body as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, this is your true and proper worship. It's similar to what Jesus said to the lawyer who went to ask him about eternal life. Jesus said, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your strength and with all your mind and all your soul. Such total commitment to God cannot be forced. One must voluntarily, willingly, and cheerfully go up to the altar to make an offering. Why do we call this holiness? Because the original phrase to present was you to refer to us offering ourselves. Such a sacrifice in the Old Testament system of offerings is related to the burnt offering, the grain offering, and the peace offering which are given by free will and cheerfully as an expression of devotion to God. These are called fragrance offerings. Sin offerings and guilt offerings are required for the purpose of atonement and remission of sins. They are necessary and are done for our own sake, not for God, that such offerings are holy and acceptable in God's sight is because what is being offered must be separated, dedicated to God. It is not about what we can gain from making that offering, but about fully submitting everything to God or unto God. In this way, living a life that is set apart from the world and submitted to God does not mean that we can keep sins away or have reached the peak of spirituality. The Christian faces many distractions and temptations daily. This world has many different voices and values. Through this coronavirus pandemic, we hear many questioning the value of life versus the values of freedom. Or if life is more important than the economy of the country, or if personal advantage was more important than the needs of the people, it is dangerous for any religions to abuse their freedom for religion practices and disregard others' safety. Right from the beginning of Romans chapter 12, Paul reminds us to be alert because the ways of this world generally do not conform to God's good, pleasing, and perfect will. Paul asks that we do not take the ways of this world as our model. Instead, we are to be transformed by the renewal of our mind. Today's world is flooded by social media. Much of the news and views are mixed with false and fabricated fake news. Therefore, test everything against God's will. This is the best way for every Christian to maintain their devotion to God. In the Methodist spiritual formations experience, this is a real and daily struggle. Wesley regards prayer, Bible study, Holy Communion, fasting, fellowship, private 
and public worship as means of grace. Through this, we may continuously receive grace from God, the only way to a sustainable godly life. Love others with your whole heart and whole mind. Let's go through these few verses from verse 9 to verse 21 and reflect on what Paul brings up as regular Christian living. If we go by what John Wesley said, that holy living is to love God with our whole heart and mind and to also love others as we love ourselves with our whole heart and mind, then this passage is about total submission to God. Those who fully offer themselves on the altar to God must similarly fully offer themselves to love others every day in whatever we do for others we must get the fundamentals right to move us to do the right things and to deal with others in love. Let me give a simple explanation to this passage using what Paul wrote in the epistles to the Colossians in chapter 3, verse 18 to chapter 4, verse 6. There, it was explained very clearly that whether it is for our wife, husband, father and mother, our children, superiors, subordinate, for those who serve the Lord and those who don't believe Him, in all matters, big and small, Paul says, whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord and not for men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the inheritance as your reward. You are serving the Lord Christ. Now, put this passage side by side with Romans chapter 12, verse 9 to 21. And you will see clearly how these relate to each other. But let's return to the present. As Christians living in this world, in everything we do, from start to end, it is by love that we serve. This is quite easy to say. To reach such Christian perfection that John Wesley spoke about require continuous and gradual training and nurturing. No one can become a perfect being in an instance and not have to go through a continuous process of growth and maturation, whether it is loving God with our whole heart and mind or loving others with our whole heart and mind. Both are impossible to achieve in an instant. Christians are born again to new life and receive assurance of their salvation. Wesley stressed that, that every Christian can, by the God-given means of grace, sustain lifelong growth till he reaches perfection. This is the spiritual formation that John Wesley pursued and practiced throughout his life. Whether in loving God with our whole heart and mind or loving others with our whole heart and mind, it is a life of pursuing holiness, a gradual, lifelong growth until we meet the Lord again. So, going back to Romans chapter 12, verse 9 to 21, how do we love others without being forced? The world has many who only look out for their own interests, who are difficult to get along with, and those who harm and persecute Christians. A Chinese traditional saying by Meng Zi says, those who love others will be loved by others, and those who respect others will be respected by others. That sounds like quite a good person. 
But it is a Christian perfection. At no point during the pursuit of holiness can anyone think that one has already reached perfection and there's no need to continue that pursuit. In the real journey of a Christian, in any objective situation or under subjective conditions, there will be ups and downs, stop and start, discouragement and despair. For this reason, Christians must continually drive themselves towards Christian perfection through the means of grace. As Paul said, owe no one anything except to love each other. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. In Romans chapter 13, verse 8. And love never ends. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 8. But let's not fall into the idea that Christians can depend on good works to please our Lord or that we can depend on good works to gain salvation. From 1739, when the United Societies were formed, John Wesley made clear that all Methodists shall continue to evidence their desire of salvation. The general rules in our books of discipline, paragraph 71. Yes, our society today is complex and disturbing, and it is hard to discern the heart of men. Even within the church, there are many who may be difficult to get along with and may even disappoint us through their words and deeds. In 2017, the Christian Post estimated that in any church, 5% of the people will disappoint you or hurt you. But do not be despondent because 95% of the people are sincere and care for others and are devout and God-fearing. Even in our community and neighborhoods, it is the same where most people are good and kind. Christians must ensure they count among the majority who are good. Times of crisis can expose the ugliness and weakness of men. Yet, it can also bring out the best in many. This time, when the COVID-19 pandemic, there are some who disregard civil and social responsibility. But there are also many who acted out of heart, filled with love and warmth, and so inspired and moved others. Paul in Galatians chapter 6, verse 9 said, Do not lose heart in doing good. Don't worry about not getting credit from doing good. Nor worry whether you have done well enough or if you have done enough. John Wesley's counsel to all is by doing good, by being in every kind merciful after their power, as they have opportunity, do good of every sort and as far as possible to every man. This is Methodist general rule, rule number two. In every area affected by the COVID pandemic, we can see many are full of admirations for the doctors and other healthcare workers who serve as the front line in the worst heat areas day and night, fighting to save those who are ill. For the sake of these patients, they spend many weeks or even months in the hospital or hostels unable to return home, staying apart from their spouse, parents, children, siblings. Among them are our children and family. They are using their lives to help another life. An admirable spirit that moves our hearts and demands our deepest gratitude. This is what is meant by being in every kind merciful and doing good 
of every possible sort to all men. On 17th April, the Straits Times reported that Mr. Tom Moore, a 99 years old World War II veteran, with the help of a walking frame, covered 100 laps of a 25 meter circuit around his garden to complete 2.5 kilometers. Originally, he wanted to do this on his 100th birthday to raise 1,000 pounds for the National Health Service that took care of him when he had a broken hip and cancer. Who would have expected that the COVID-19 situation in England would be so severe with over 30,000 deaths? When this news was published, it drew much applause and eager support so that it eventually raised 28 Millions of pounds, he said. In the last war, it was soldiers in uniform on the front line. This time, our army are the doctors and nurses in uniform. We will survive this. Now, this is a frail old man who can barely stand up to the wind, but he is doing all the good he can. Some of our Methodist churches reach out to take care of vagrants who live in the open or provide welfare help for the foreign workers. This outbreak has highlighted this group of people and there are many who felt that we were not doing enough for them, for their accommodations and living conditions which need a major makeover. Even in an affluent community, we must not forget that there are many street corners and alleyways where they are poor without sufficient food or clothes. And then there are those who build our nations with their hard work, whether it is the government or the employers, the society at large, or the church, we must treat these people as our neighbor, even if it is just for a short time of a year or two or three or longer. Don't lose heart. There are many other opportunities to do all the good we can. Social holiness is the Christian's act of mercy. Much good can be done by individual Christians but, of course, it is more effective when the whole body of Christians unite together in good work. Before I finish the sermon, let me give a simple explanation as to why we are suspending Holy Communion. Number one, from Henry Wheeler's history and exposition of the 25 Articles of Religion, of the Methodist Episcopal Church bring out the key points. In Article 16 regarding sacraments, he reminded us that a sacrament is an outward and visible sign of an inward spiritual grace given unto us, ordained by Christ himself. When Christ ordained the sacraments, not only are they to be the Christians' professions of faith, but rather they are signs of grace and God's goodwill towards us by which he works invisibly in us to stir us, but also strengthen and confirm our faith in him. Therefore, when Christ institutes such sacraments, the original intention was not to make a show of it all, but that those who are respectful, humble, and repentant should receive it and gain from it. Otherwise, as Paul says, they eat and drink judgment on themselves. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse, verse 29. Now, in Article 18, 
regarding Holy Communion, the Lord's Supper, is not only a sign of the love that Christians ought to have among themselves one to another, but rather is a sacrament of our redemption by Christ's death. And so we are to receive rightly, worthily, and by faith. The bread which we break and the cup of blessing represents a partaking of the body of Christ and the blood of Christ. Here is a reminder that we are to receive the Lord's Supper rightly and worthily. The Methodist Church has delegated to preside over and consecrate the Holy Communion only to those who have been called and ordained as elders. The administrator should act with becoming reverence, hurry, or the omissions of important parts of any prescribed form is unseemly. Everything should be done with solemnity but with a cheerful spirit. There are times in the history of the church when there was no elder on hand or war, deadly epidemics, or when there was a shortage of materials and resources so that the church was unable to conduct the Holy Communion in the right and worthy manner. Then the church had decided that she would rather hold on and wait, whether for three months, four months, or even six months, until the right conditions permitted to continue. Number two, Methodism encourages the frequent conduct of the Holy Communion, but there is great importance on the communion of the saints. That is the fellowship, koinonia. You and I and all Christians in fellowship with the Lord in body, mind, and spirit. Thus, the proclamations as we break the bread and raise the cup because there is one loaf. We who are many are one body for we all partake of the one loaf. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. The cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. When we break the bread and share the cup, we are sharing in the body of Christ. Each of us eating our own bread and drink at home or online Holy Communion is unable to achieve such fellowship or koinonia and unable to fulfill what the liturgy says that when we eat of the one bread and drink of the cup of thanksgiving, we are sharing in the body of Christ and his precious blood. Number three, the Holy Communion is one of the means of grace, but not the only one. We have other means of grace to help us continue to live godly lives. Number four, the body of Christ is not just the Methodist Church. There are other brothers and sisters who belong to Christ. Some of these churches suspended the Holy Communion even earlier than us. They have been having the Eucharist fast even longer than we did. For the good of all, they have endured with the hunger for righteousness, persevering through the self-denial and self-discipline. Paul urges us, to have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, not looking to our own interests, but to the interests of the others. Let us join with the larger church of Christ and journey together. Finally, I sincerely wish you may keep the love and fear of God within your hearts, to lean upon Him and to be there for your neighbors when they have need offering care and help with your whole heart and mind, and to pray and give thanks for our country to peacefully overcome this pandemic. We pray to the Lord to 
help keep the fire ablaze in our hearts to bravely meet the challenges facing us. The Methodist Church in Singapore has 135 years' journey. We must sustain our hearts strangely warm. Love God with all our hearts and mind and love our neighbours with all our hearts and mind. When the pandemic is over, it is also when we pull out our sleeves and work together, serve together, and with all our strength, join in the rebuilding of our community, helping those in need. Amen. Thank you, Bishop, for your message. Let us now respond together with this song, The People of the Way. Let us affirm our faith. Together, we state what our church affirms and believe, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, 
was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Prayers of the people. As I say the prayer, please respond to the words in bold. Let us pray to our kind and merciful God that his love for us may animate all we do and that our love may become contagious. Let us say, Lord, make us instruments, instruments of your love. That the Methodist Church in Singapore may never cease to proclaim by its teaching, life and liturgy, the love of God and neighbor is the heart of the gospel, and that people are God's gifts, gift to us. Let us pray. Lord, make us instruments of your love. That people may not lose their hearts in today's economic systems of profit, efficiency, production, and competition, but they may keep giving first place to human relationships of friendship and respect. Let us pray. Lord, Lord make, make us instruments of your love. That we may have room in our hearts for all people, that we may learn to share our goods and ourselves with the little people loved by God, the poor and the lonely and those who suffer. Let us pray. Lord, Lord make, make us instruments of your love. Our gentle God, Help us to love you and one another without measure. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, the Christian life is redeemed from sin and consecrated to God. Through baptism, we have entered this life and have been admitted into the new covenant of which Jesus Christ is the mediator. He sealed it with his own blood that it might last forever. On the one side, God promises to give us new life in Christ, that source and perfecter of our faith. On the other side, we are pledged to live no more for ourselves, but only for Jesus Christ who loved us and gave himself for us. Today, we gather as members of the Methodist Church in Singapore to renew the covenant that binds us to God. Let us make this covenant of God our own. I am no I'm longer my longer own, but thine. Put, Put me to what thou wilt. Rank, rank me with whom, whom thou wilt. Thou wilt. Put, Put me to doing Put, put me to suffering. suffering. Let, Let me be employed, employed by thee or laid aside, aside for thee, exalted for thee or brought low for thee. Let me be full. Let me be empty. Let me have all things. Let me have nothing. I freely and heartily yield all things to thy pleasure and disposal. And now, O glorious and blessed God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Thou art mine, and I am thine, so be it. And the covenant which I have made on earth, let it be ratified in heaven. Amen. I'm going to say the Lord's Prayer in Tamil, and please do so at your language, at the language that you're comfortable. Paramandalangali lirikla engal pidave, umri namam parisutta paduvadaga, umri rajyam varuvadaga, umri sittam paramandalatile se padagradu pola, bumi ilum se paduvadaga. அன்றுள்ள எங்கள் ஆகாரத்தை எங்களுக்கு இன்று தாரும் எங்களுக்கு விரோதமாய் குற்றம் செய்வர்களுக்கு நாங்கள் மன்னிக்கிறது போல எங்கள் குற்றங்களை எங்களுக்கு மன்னியும் எங்களை சோதனைக்குள் பிரவேசிக்க பண்ணாமல் தீமை நின்று எங்கள் ரச்சித்துக் கொள்ளும் ராஜ்யம் வல்லமை மகிமை என்றென்றைக்கும் முடிகளே ஆமேன் லெட் எஸ் நாவ் சிங் த லார்ட்ஸ் ப்ரேயர் 
should be led by Nadia. Oh, Father in heaven, I will know what be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is. peace of the Lord be always with you and, and also, also with you. you. Once again, uh, welcome to Fu Chao Methodist Church. If you are together now with your spouse or family member, can we please turn to each other and say, the peace of God be with you. Thank you. It's now time for announcements. I'm going to highlight some items found in the e-bulletin. First, send a greeting. I thank all who SMS, WhatsApp, call a fellow member uh, on Monday. Let's do this again. Monday, tomorrow, 12 noon to 1 p.m. Let's call each other as one church. Financial Assistance Scheme Your job and livelihood may have been badly affected by this disease. OSC has come up with a financial assistance scheme. If you need help, please go to the e-bulletin for more details. Here's an update from the Missions Committee. In the light, in the light of the CB measures, budgeted mission trips have been cancelled and this has resulted in an adjustment uh, of the mission budget down by 30k. Nonetheless, the needs of our supported missionaries, the Cambodian hostel, they still remain. So do continue to pray for and contribute to the mission's efforts. The full details are found in the bulletin. The mission's revised shortfall in budget is now projected to be about 47k. Finally, the good news in FMC. In the month of June, our pulpit arrangement will focus on the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Each Sunday, the speaker will give an invitation to anyone who want to respond to Jesus Christ. Can you invite a friend or family member to log in and uh, participate in the worship service? The details of each Sunday are found in the bulletin. Do pray. Let's prepare our hearts for tithes and offering. Let's pray. Father God, in gratitude, we now offer in return a portion of what you have blessed us with. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The church is still closed, so 
uh, if you are sending a check uh, as uh, part of your offerings, please do contact Wendy first. The QR code is now up. Please use your handphone to scan the QR code. I'll give you a few moments to do that. Can we now stand for the doxology? Let us pray. Almighty God, in a time of great need, you rise up your servants, John and Charles Wesley, and by your Spirit, inspire them to kindle a frame of sacred love, an inextinguishable blaze. May your Spirit continue to rise up your people in this generation, to proclaim the gospel, and to testify your goodness. Grants that all those whose hearts have been warm continue to be refreshed by your grace, may be so devoted to the increase of scriptures holiness throughout the land, especially in this time of great need. Your will may fully and effectively be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, we pray for your healing upon this land in this time of pandemic. May your mercy and strength unto all the people of this world and in this nation. We pray all this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now let us close with a famous Wesley hymn, And Can It Be That I Should Gain? Guide he for me who caused him pain, for me who him to death pursued. Amazing love, how can it be that thou, my God, die for me? Amazing love, how can it be that thou my God shouldst die for me. He left his father's throne above, so free, so infinite his grace, emptied himself of all but love and bless for Adam's helpless race. Tis mercy all immense and free, for, O oh my God, found out me. Amazing love, how can it be that thou, my God, shouldst die for me? Long my imprisoned spirit lay, fast bound in sin and nature's night. Thine I diffuse the quickening ray. I woke the dungeon flamed with light. My 
chains fell off, my heart was free. I rose, went forth, followed thee. Amazing love, how can it be that thou, my God, shouldst die for me? No condemnation now I dread, Jesus and all in him is mine. Alive in him I live. Living head and clothed in righteousness divine. Bold I approach the eternal throne, claim the crown through Christ my own. Amazing love, how can it be? Thou, my God shoulds die for me. Now may the Lord of peace himself continually grant you peace in every circumstance. The Lord be with you all. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. The service is now over. Do join us for service next Sunday. See you next week.